Hi guys, welcome to another video. I uh, hope you're all, uh, uh, you're all keeping well. Um, now, in this video, um, I'd like to talk uh, briefly about uh, some uh, books uh, in my collection, um, which I absolutely love being, a, being a, an ardent, uh, you know, ardent fan of horror fiction and also being a, a, horror, a, horror, a horror author myself. Um, at these books, I mean, I actually, uh, I, I mean, I grew up with these books, like I read them, like I borrowed them from the library as a kid and that, you know, and I'm happy to have tracked down some of the original copies now, you know, to add to my collection. Now, the first one up is the 18 Fontana book of great ghost stories, marvellous, marvellous series, you know, I mean, as I say, I rented these books many times from my local library, you know, uh, as a kid and that, you know, and they're just packed with some fantastic stories, you know, some real little gems and that, you know, and it's great to actually be able to track them down now online because now the, these books are very, very hard to find. Like, you're lucky if you come across one in a second-hand shop. Um, so I'll just read from the back of this one just to give you an idea of its contents. The ghosts of fear, they are in the wind, in the shadows, in all the things of everyday life. In the summer house, a little girl keeps disappearing to a place that doesn't exist. In off the deep end, a lair and a rod catches more than fish. And eye to eye, a new old dame left takes its owner for the drive of his life. Macabre, haunting, creeping, the ghosts of fear appear in 13 more stories in this chilling collection. So there you go, that's the 18 Fontana book of great ghost stories. Next one up, here's another one. The 17th Fontana book of great ghost stories. Now again, I'll just read to the back of this one to give you an idea of its, of its content. Eerie tales by master storytellers of gruesome ghosts, mourning ghosts, even, even contented ghosts. Now in the lamp, a spectral child claims a friend. In the shot tower ghost, a wager is kept on beyond the grave. In welcome manner, uh, an actor's vengeful spirit returns to event returns to a television studio in which one a ghost is born so there you go there are 13 more macabre stories in this haunting collection so that's the 17 fontana book of great ghost stories next one the ninth fontana book of great ghost stories again marvelous marvelous book um ghosts from the dead of night and the chill of day stories like the coast the house appeared to be un uninhabited, and yet, plainly someone or something had recently been in that place. Who or what was the restless, questing creature that had made those strange tracks to and from the old coast? I had a close look at the old garments. All at once it seemed to me that there was more than an odour of mould and rotting cloth emanating from the thing, that there was a taint of putrefying flesh and bone. So there you go. The Ninth Fontana Book of Great Ghost Stories. Next one up. The Fourth Fontana Book of Great Ghost Stories. Chilling masterpieces of the macabre. Stories like the snow. She was standing in the drawing room, looking out over the dusky, ghostly snow to the great hulk of the cathedral. Like a crouching beast, slicking its lips over the miserable sinners it was forever devouring. And as she looked and shivered, it seemed to her that her bright and cheerful firelit drawing room was suddenly open to the snow. It was exactly as though cracks had appeared everywhere, and that through those cracks the snow was filtering, dribbling in little tracks of wet down the walls. Then, turning, she saw the figure by the door. So there you go. That's the fourth Fontana book of Great Ghost Stories. These are fantastic classic reads. I mean, if you've never read them, I strongly recommend you know, I strongly recommend that you get yourself some copies. You can get them on eBay, you know, and sometimes on Amazon. Yeah, they're very good books. Now we're moving on to a uh, another favourite author of mine, um, classic author called R. Chetwin Hayes. Now, this is the first one. Tales of Fear and Fantasy. Now I remember renting this from your local library back in nineteen seventy eight. And I was actually, the minute, on the stories, I was instantly captivated by how well written they were. R. Chetwin Hayes has written many, 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 many short stories. Uh, again, some of which, like Robert Block, some of which have been adapted for for, uh, t for movies like, you know, the Amicus uh, Portmanteau movies. So I'll just read you the back of this one. The Dark Blankets of Fear. A village of flesh-eating ghouls. The youth who fell in love with a corpse. 
a bleeding ghost in search of its head. The salesman who dealt in souls. From the black night of the soul, tales of blood and gnawing horror by a master storyteller. Indeed, our Sheffield Hayes was a master storyteller and he knows how to put a good horror story together. Fantastic book. Now, I've got another one here by R. Chapman Hayes, and that is Night Ghouls. Again, fantastic, fantastic collection of, of short horror stories. I'll just read you the back of this one. Nightmares of Shuddering Horror. The terror-crazed ghost of Battersea. A monster that feeds on virgin's blood. The evil black riders who hunt by night. A midnight feast of the ghouls. Echoing down the, the eerie centuries, tales of mortal fear to curdle the blood by a master storyteller. Yeah, indeed, he was a master story, storyteller, R. Chapman Hayes. And I'd love them for one day for, the, for a publisher to bring out, you know, a huge volume containing all of his short stories. Because a lot of his short stories are basically just scattered around here and there in different volumes and that, you know. And uh, yeah, I'd love that to happen. I'd love somebody to publish a huge you know, a Tiger Tank book of all, all his short stories. He's a fantastic writer, always entertaining, sometimes adds a little bit of humour into his stories, which sort of like enhances the flavour. But yeah, if you've never read Hart Chapman Hayes, I strongly recommend that you read some of his books. He's a fantastic storyteller. Oh, now we're moving on to my, <laughs> I think these must be my all-time favourite books, what I used to rent from the library when I was a kid, like, you know, and then it's great to be able to get some of them now, you know, uh, you know some of the original copies. I'm going to start off with, the Ninth Pan Book of Horror Stories. Fantastic, fantastic series of horror story books. I can't utter enough superlatives to describe these volumes. There's some great names in them, some famous names, also some lesser known authors. Been some fantastic stories in these over the years. I just read you the back of this one just to give an idea of you know the kind of stories you'll, you'll expect to find in here. In Human Humans, the Jolly Uncle and the Dummy that Suck Blood, the Unmarried Mother and the Torture Mask. The film director who flayed his girl alive. Ooh. The wife who turned into an insect. And the mother and sister who emasculate a rapist. Yeah, spawn from horror and fear come the familiars of terror. 23 awesome tales to haunt your days and chill your dreams. Every one now published for the first time. So yeah, I have fond, fond memories of these guys, you know, renting from your local library as a kid. And uh, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, they were actually revived, like in a special edition, along with a couple of new stories. And it was great to see them back. I'd love to see these back on the market, on the bookshelves again. So if any authors or publisher listening, guys, this is the series to revive. Got another one here. My final book I'm going to review today, and that is the Eighth Pan Book of Horror Stories. So again, I'll just read you the back of it. The Children, Lover's Leap, Sugar and Spice, The Benefactor. Suitable app applicants, innocent seeming titles, yet they mask some of the most fearful happenings devised in the human imagination. To make a mockery of sleep, Gerald Kesh, Raymond Williams, Ray Bradbury, A.J. Roth and many others conjure stories of evil that encompass cannibalism, sorocide, voodooism, murder, head shrinking, demonology, the supernatural and worse. Much, much worse. So there you go, guys. That's me, a little collection. Um, I hope to be adding some more titles, like, you know, as I come across them on Amazon. But, yeah, as I say, I grew up with these books as a, as a kid. Like, I just absolutely love, love reading them. I mean, I graduated on these. I mean, I was a big, huge fan of Enid Blyton, you know, uh, when, I was, uh, when I was knee high. And I graduated up to more serious stuff as I got older. Like most people do, like if you like this sort of thing, like, you know, went into these fantastic, fantastic books. And uh, they, as I, they've given me some... A good inspiration to you know as a writer myself and then i've published two i've published two collections of my own short horror stories which i've reviewed in the previous video so if you'd like to check those out it'd be very great and if you could leave some comments down below uh, and subscribe to the channel that'd be great you know so yeah as i say i hope to do some more videos in the future about me me horror book collection but they, they as i say they're absolute classics i mean you can read them over and over and uh, you know uh, they're just some of the stories are just they just leap off the page of that good and that, you know, and the writer's extremely talented. I mean, some writers I've never even heard of. You can write some cracking little stories. So as I say, I can highly recommend them, guys. I mean, it's like, I'll be doing some more, well, I hope to be doing some more video reviews of me, uh, you know, my old paperback collection uh, and any new ones I might add to them in the future. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, okay, so stay safe, guys.